everybody, Tom here with PC Gamer, and I'm here with Jeff Paplin and Chris Metzen from the Overwatch team. How you guys doing? Doing awesome. Doing good. Good. Well, thanks for joining me. So, first of all, you guys have been in beta for about a week and a half now, is that right? How's it, go how's it going so far? Anything unexpected crop up? I'll take this from you so you don't have to... <laughs> That was good, though. Um, yeah. The, the beta's been going awesome so far. Um, like you mentioned, it's been up for about a week and a half now. Um, we've caught a lot of nasty bugs. We, we caught some exploits that shouldn't have been in there. There was an aim assist on the gamepad. Um, that was a holdover from console, but we couldn't tell everybody this is a holdover from console. Um, so we removed that immediately. Um, we've done a number of iterations on our matchmaker. Um, and the matchmaking progress has been really good because the matchmaking for us up, in, up until this point has been all theory craft. Um, but now that we have population in there, we're refining the matchmaking. Um, and we have some tuning and balancing that's coming up uh, soon based on beta feedback. And um, also we'll be introducing the new heroes hopefully this week. Cool. And so I heard that seven and a half million people applied to be into the beta, which is an absolutely ludicrous number. That's incredible. About how many of, like, what percentage of that have you guys already let in, if so, you can say? Uh, it's obviously a very small percentage um, has gotten in. Um, something that I, I saw a thread on the internet and I felt really bad. There's a lot of people like, hey, just charge us for access to the beta. And we're at this point where it's not about, um, wanting to keep people out or anything like that. Part of the beta is getting our servers ready to scale um, for our launch, which is coming up in the spring. So even if we wanted to, we can't support a population that's big enough to get everybody in right now. So um, the whole point of this beta for us is um, master the matchmaker, refine the design and balance of the game, and uh, scale the technology so we can actually take, when those people are ready to come in and play, they can actually play and not just have a server down message, which right. is what they'd all get right now. Uh, and so you mentioned this a little bit, and you again mentioned it also in the panel yesterday, uh, you, about balance changes. Have you guys caught anything so far or any ideas of like who you think is problematic or something on a map where you know you're going to change it already? Um, on the maps, we've made a number of changes. Actually, they've been fixed. Um, some of them are in flight and some of them already hit. Um, the beta testers were awesome at finding amazing places for Widowmaker to get, who, who to thunk, yeah. um, or Farah, like, oh wow, there she is, way up there. Um, so we, we've fixed a lot of those things. Um, on the hero design side, we're looking at a couple of heroes. We want to make some quality of life changes to Symmetra. Um, those are largely driven by a great forum thread that we saw. A poster really wrote some fantastic feedback. We agreed with it. Um, we've got some changes coming. And then we're taking a look at um, McCree right now um, because we feel like he's super fantastic at long range, mid range, and short range. <laughs> and we feel like he can be good at maybe one to two of those ranges and maybe not all three. So um, Mr. McCree might be the first one to get a little bit of a pullback in, in his effectiveness. I've definitely noticed moments like that where you'll just be walking along and think, oh, Widowmaker got me, and you just drop that and it's McCree from halfway across the map. So that's, that's interesting to hear that he might be on the, the first on the chopping block, so to speak. Well, on, on the subject of that, there's been a lot of talk about, you know, some people say, oh, you should lock in heroes. And I, I personally, I disagree with that. And you've said many, many times that it's basically not going to happen. But what about on the subject of having multiples of heroes on a team? Are you guys at all looking at some sort of like cap, at like maybe three or anything like that? Is that even not in your mind? So. The number of here is funny. Um, if we really detected a large problem with too many heroes being on a team at a time, um, we would address it for sure. We see almost the opposite. Like there's a sweet spot in Overwatch where one to two of, the, of a certain hero seems to be somewhat effective. There's even some players in the beta who argue they don't want to see two of the same hero because they, they feel like they're missing out on something. We've found that when people start to really hero stack, you know, three, four, five, even six, it happens. Um, it's so easily counterable. Um, I had a match, it was, this was in the alpha before the beta had started, where the other team went six soldier 76s. And uh, we had a really well-balanced team composition and we didn't know how to deal with it. They were wrecking us. And 
you know, you just heard, I've got you all in my sights. <laughs> over and over, like chains out. I get it. We're all in your sights. And uh, our team's like, this is, this is terrible. Like, we're just getting wrecked. And then in team chat, we said, hey, everybody switch to Zarya or Reinhardt. And we all switched to Zarya's and Reinhardt's. And the 76s didn't change. And we just wrecked them. We, we won <laughs> right after that because we were such a strong counter. Um, so multiple heroes usually is sort of a detriment because once you start countering from the other team, um, you're actually putting yourself at risk. All of the maps right now kind of feel like they follow this formula of choke point, winding turn, choke point, winding turn sort of thing. Uh, how likely is it going to be that that's just how maps in Overwatch are? Or, or do you think you're going to be trying to push the envelope a little bit with map design, maybe have wide open spaces or something like that? Uh, you know, I mean, I can't totally speak for design, but I, I think through the process of, of playing the maps we have, um, we started with, you know, the core gameplay that we've kind of loved over time, and it allowed us to kind of develop metrics for what are our expectations? How do we want this to feel? How, you know, how do we want these characters to kind of play against each other? So, you know, starting in more familiar territory, you know, the... Um, you know, the, the capture points and the, you know, you know, the, the payload type maps um, were areas where we could really just get our bearing. You know, so obviously that's representative of the first batch of maps we've, we've built. But, um, you know, Jeff and the team are constantly looking at, you know, different types of gameplay um, that we could um, leverage down the road. And, you know, we're still kind of playing with ideas and testing, you know, um, game types out. So, you know, hopefully some of those ideas will come to fruition and be awesome new gameplay paradigms, you know. And so we finally have seen the payment model. This was something I asked you about when I was at the preview event at Blizzard HQ. And it's not free to play. And everyone kind of just assumed de facto it would be free to play. Why did you get, decide to go with this $40 and then $60 Origins Edition model instead of free to play? I can't do the same thing. Then it's back to Tom. Yeah. Um, we, we felt like uh, the defining characteristic of Overwatch is the heroes. Um, the heroes are the content of the game. That's what we always say, it's all about the heroes. Um, in fact, we don't let other map game modes get in the way. Um, if they start to uh, encroach upon the fun hero gameplay, we pull back from doing stuff in the maps, like the previous question that you just asked. Um, and the same thing goes for the business model. Um, we couldn't imagine a business model for this game where you didn't have access to all 21 of those heroes that we've introduced. And um, we feel like there's a gameplay variety there. There's um, just an emotional variety of heroes of, you know, May really speaks to me and I think she's adorable and I want to be her. And um, we didn't want players stressing out about you know, well, how do I get my hands on her? What's the unique formula that I need to do to unlock her? Um, and we really want to encourage that hero switching as well. Um, and we felt like in models that didn't have all of the heroes available to our players, um, it became very difficult to try to reinforce this concept of fluidity in the team compositions, uh, hero switching and experimentation. So a question that has been a concern within the subreddit that I've seen and I don't think I've heard a an answer to is do you guys are you guys planning on having anything that affects gameplay behind a paywall DLC microtransactions of any kind? That's a really um, great question and I we've been following the subreddit as well and um, there's this constant um, sentiment that we're dodging the question and I find this like it's very upsetting to me because um, dodging the question to me would be we have a definitive answer and a definitive plan and we just don't want to tell you what it is yet and that's absolutely not the case it is such a backbreaking painstaking amount of work to make a game and just to deliver it and have it be awesome and our entire focus is on Overwatch Live what's going to make it into that in the final game um, we feel great about the 21 heroes. We feel like it's a fantastic experience. We feel like it's the right business model for the game. And um, like I said earlier, we're not sure if and when and how we're going to add other heroes to the game at all. Like, should we add heroes at all is the first question. And then if we do, let's gauge where the game is at, the health of the game. Um, I think there was a misconception that that early on went around, and I'm not sure how this came about, that um, 
you would get 21 heroes when the game launched, but there would be a hero store with other heroes for sale at, at launch also, and that couldn't be furthest from the truth. If we had more heroes at that time, they would just be in the, in the game. Um, and then there was also a misconception that we were selling maps, and we've never said, had any intention of selling maps, so I'm not sure. I think there's a lot of panic in the unknown, um, and there's a lot of distrust going on, and I can understand where some of that distrust comes from, but I wish people would have faith in the fact that Blizzard has always delivered high quality games that are a really great value. Um, and we're looking for this to be a fun experience for all of us, you know, um, the people who make the game, the players, in, in my opinion, the players equally make the game. Um, there's not some hidden conspiracy out there that, you know, oh, can't wait till they do this and then we're going to spring this paywall on them. That's just not the case. I think, it's just, I think it just goes to, you know, kind of where the industry is these days and it's changed you know the, the way you know a lot of games are monetized or whatever I, th I think there is sometimes a cynicism about okay how, how am I going to get you know price gouged or you know, money gouged or whatever and um, yeah I think we understand that we play we play everything you know um, I'm supposed to say we're working hard all the time 24 hours a day <laughs> um, but we're gamers you know like we you know we, we have our own feelings about games we play and um, different models and so um, I think Jeff's absolutely right on. We're just trying to make the best game we can make to in the total package and, and deliver it and, you know, just hope that people dig it. You know, that, that, is, that is it, um, you know, so, um, but, uh, you know, I think, I think we understand how people feel on the street, but yeah, there's no, there's no conspiracy, <laughs> well, you know. I, I think some of the concern comes from the fact that for a long time, people assumed that Overwatch would be following more of a Heroes of the Storm sort of business model. And that's where the concern of, of hero selling and that sort of thing comes in. Kind of fighting a lot of presumption up front. You know, exactly. Or ass assumption up front. So, so would you say that Overwatch is not going to follow the Heroes of the Storm model? No, oh, we're, we're clearly not. Yeah. Um, in fact, um, I'm not familiar with how much a hero costs currently in Heroes of the Storm, but um, I think if you extrapolated the math on 21 heroes, $40 seems pretty awesome to me. It's a damn fine bargain. So, and finally, just to finish up, I have to settle an obsession of my boss, Tim Clark. Is the Overwatch logo two people high-fiving? Whoa. <laughs> You can't I've, unsee I've, it now. I've never heard that before. Yeah. I will not be able to unsee it. There you go. <laughs> I kind of love it. Yeah, it's not bad. I kind of love it. It's all about that. teamwork. Wow. It's the Overwatch, is, it just keeps giving. It does. <laughs> it's amazing. Well, thanks very much for joining us, guys. And keep an eye out on PCGamer.com for more from BlizzCon coming up.